Whoa! This lobby is laden with loudness. <laughs> Hi, Michael. Michael, I knew I smelled a dozen long-stemmed roses. What did you call those things again? Roses? Why not? I give you flowers. I wouldn't call a packet of burpee seeds romantic. Boy, there is no pleasing you. Anyway, this is my way of saying that due to a pile of paperwork, I have to press the pause button on our lunch date. Michael, you're a producer. Lunch is what you do. <laughs> Try telling it to that tyrant Nancy. She's turning the station into a sweatshop. I thought the new station owner was a man. He is. She's, she's the gopher. <laughs> You're afraid of the office health? Too many crickets, Steph. She's bossy and she's whiny. She complains about every little thing. Thank goodness I have you to come home to. You've been blessed. Why don't you plop these posies in Perrier while I jump on the blab wagon with Dick? Snip the end. Fill the vase. Change water often. Oh, Joanna, you're so lucky you never get flowers. <laughs> I've been blessed, too. Dick, I don't know how to handle this gopher from hell. He's already trying to sabotage Vermont today by quibbling over next week's guest. You mean J.D. Salinger? Sure. I mean, that's who you'd be stuck with if hipper heads hadn't prevailed. <coughs> who did I get, Michael? The amazing Earl. Don't tell me. A fortune teller? For sure, Joanna. Anyone can predict the future. The amazing Earl predicts the past with 90% accuracy. <laughs> There's, uh, there's got to be a trick. <laughs> he was just a normal guy. Last year, a brick fell on his head, and he predicted the Beatles would break up. Are you talking about the amazing Earl? Yesterday at the town square, he predicted we'd have a man on the moon by 1970. <laughs> Hi, I'm Larry. This is my brother, Daryl, and this is my other brother, Daryl. Can o history? We're collecting artifacts for our time capsule. Daryl here feels that George, as a member of the town's oldest and nearly extinct family, should be the first to contribute. It's kind of hard to turn down an offer like that, George. How about my hammer? My dad gave it to me, and his dad got it at Sears. Sears? Here, Larry. See if those future folk can keep up with a day in my life. Wow. Power breakfast, brunch, late lunch, high tea, cocktails, dinner. Well, no need for a Snickers to tide you over. <laughs> Harris, I'm still waiting for those requisition forms. Nancy, let up. I realize this is your first job in television, so let's review the chain of command. You're, uh... A gopher, which puts you right about here. <laughs> and I'm a producer, which puts me right about here. And it would take you roughly a bazillion promotions just to look me in the belt. In the time it took you to say all that, you could have done those requisitions. Well, Paul and Bud, on another coffee break, boys? What if we are? I sure hope no one squeals to the new station owner. I'm telling you, Mike, if it were up to me, she'd have a size 12 boot mark on her behind. <laughs> you know, Mike, we can get rid of her. I mean, just between you, me, the walls, and Bud, who runs this station? Well, Natch, that, that would be yours, truly. Oh, with us behind you, we could send that pushy pest packing and have her pounding the pavement by the PM. <laughs> Perfectly put, Paul, but practical. She's not PIV material, Mike. I wouldn't be surprised if she sleeps around. The harlot! <laughs> Strike while the iron is hot. Oh, Sue, would you be so kind as to ask Mr. Gorski to step into Mr. Harris's office? Thank you. Now we all together on this, bud? I hear she sleeps around. <laughs> Mike? Uh, are you sure we shouldn't let this notion do one more lap around our noggins? <laughs> Pretty noble, considering how she ragged on your last haircut. She criticized my quaff. Uh, what is it, Michael? Mr. Gorski, we have a problem. I'm afraid that gopher's getting a little too big for her Nancy pants. Well, go on. Well, she's disruptive, she's bossy, 
And as far as her taste in hairstyles, Michael says she sleeps around. Oh. Well, I'm afraid all my instincts cry, nix this, Nudnik. Well, I certainly admire your courage and conviction to take a stand like this against my daughter, who is my single purpose in living. A beautiful girl. Precious. Isn't she, though? Now, you've spoken your heart, and I've listened. Now get the hell out of here. Good job, Mikey. <laughs> We're here to give you a time capsule update with a hearty thank you for the generous donation of your penny loafers. Penny loafers? You gave them my lucky shoes? Honey, they were old and worn. Great, now what am I supposed to wear with my lucky socks? Well, I made a sacrifice too. I gave them my lavender scarf. The one I gave you for your birthday? Oops. Now, go upstairs and... Ram a spike through my tongue. You know, while Daryl was digging, he stumbled across quite a find. Which reminds me, would you care to join us tonight in a rousing game of Guess the Carcass? It's more fun with teams. Well, you, you don't have to tell me. Miss Stephanie, may I say that your artifact was the most popular, at least with Daryl? Oh, Larry, of course you may. What, uh, what did you donate? An authentic, one-of-a-kind Stephanie Vanderkillen lip print on tissue paper. Come on, Daryl. Let's go grease up for Guess the Carcass. <laughs> Drank out the congrats. Nancy and I are no longer nose-to-nose -nose on the same grindstone. Uh. Well, I'm surprised. I, I thought she'd last. Actually, Dick, she did. The axe fell right about here. <laughs> Crawl back, Michael! Crawl like you've never crawled before! <laughs> no can do, Steph. I bad yak the boss's youngling. Na Nancy is Gorski's daughter? Curse those executive loins of his. <laughs> Michael, you're upsetting the delicate balance between a high-income job and a showpiece girlfriend. Cupcake, I was at that dead-end job too long. Stagnation may be all right for someone like Dick, but... <laughs> I need more upwardly in my mobile. I feel a worry wrinkle coming on. Unknit that brow, Steph. This is just the jump start I need. In fact, tonight we celebrate my availability. How about it, Dick? Open invite. Oh, I'm afraid I gotta grease up for guess the carcass. <laughs> well, Mr. Uh, X. <laughs> Anyone who can type 20 words a minute will always have a job in this town. <laughs> Now, report to reader in job placement for your assignment. There. Uh, Michael Harris? In the skin. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm Dottie Stansbury. Now, what sort of job are you looking for? Well, I'm not picky. What do you have in the Mucho Mula range with perks plenty? No, I mean, what field are you in? What skills do you have? I look incredible in earth tones. Oh. <laughs> I can shoes with the best, and I'm the king of the cowtown. Oh, you must be in television. Bingus. <laughs> Rita! Yes, Daddy? Uh, Mr. Harris is in television. Do we have anything for him? Something preferably in the Mucha Mula range with perks aplenty. <laughs> what a lucky day. WPIV needs a producer. Oh. <laughs> oh, fiddlesticks, I just remembered. I sent that nice Mr. X over there. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, well, we have an opening for a waiter. Sorry, not my table. <laughs> oh, they need a checker at uh, Mankey's Grocery. Excuse me, I don't see any blue in this collar. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say you wanted something in the Mucho Mula range? Welcome to my neighborhood. Uh, where all your meals would be paid for, even those you eat at home. Company car? Of course, and a house. <laughs> <laughs> Jinkies! <laughs> and you'd have no responsibilities whatsoever. Sounds too good to be true. And why do you think that is? Because a lot of jobs don't come with houses? <laughs> <laughs> no, Mr. Harris, because I was making it up. There is no job. No job? 
this employment agency only services the real world. Now, as far as I can see, you have no skills and you have only ridiculous expectations. <laughs> I'm afraid in this town that makes you virtually unemployable. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> Something wrong, George? Uh, my hammer. It's six feet under, gone forever. George, you have other hammers. Yeah, they're not the same as old blue. <laughs> Michael? Whoa, Dick. <laughs> Page out of Ripley's. <laughs> uh, what, uh, well, what are you doing here? Uh, Joanna buried my penny loafers. <laughs> what, what, are, what are you doing here? Why, the third degree, Dick. <laughs> I just thought it was kind of odd, you know, seeing you at a discount shoe store. Last time I checked, browsing for Buster Browns was still legal. <laughs> All right, Harris. Break is over. Back to work. <laughs> Michael, you you work here? <laughs> <laughs> promise you'll never tell another human being you saw me here? Sure. <laughs> blood, blood buddy promise? <laughs> Do you work here? No, he does. A little louder, Dick. <clears throat> There's someone across the street who didn't hear you. <laughs> Good afternoon, madam. May I show you something from our collection of fine vinyl? <laughs> Steph's gonna think I'm a failure. Michael, there's nothing wrong with working in a shoe store. What, what, are, what are you, the, the manager? My official title is Junior Apprentice Shoe Stocker. <laughs> you the new apprentice? No, that would be him. So you're the guy that got my old job. Look, mister, if you need anyone to show you the ropes, call on me. The name's Timmy. <laughs> oh, it's okay, mister. I cried too my first day. <laughs> <clears throat> Sit down, Dick. Pretend you're buying shoes. I am buying shoes. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Four days ago, I was Michael Harris. TV Wonderkin. Now, look at me. I'm touching people's feet. Wow, narrow dogs, Dick. Maybe, uh, maybe you'll learn something about yourself. Really, Dick, can't we crank the dimmer switch on that bright side? I want to be Michael Harris again. You didn't stop being Michael Harris just because you lost your job. Wake up, Dick. I push pumps. Michael, you may have... Slipped a few rungs on that ladder of success, but and you're still on on that ladder. The, the important thing is to to give it all you've got and, and and take some pride in what you do. I don't know, Dick. Timmy left some pretty big shoes to fill. <laughs> Timmy may be good, but you could be better. I mean, tr try selling shoes the the Michael Harris way. Right. <laughs> the Michael Harris way. Here, Dick. Why don't you slip these on for size? Um, uh, uh, Mike, Michael, they're, they're a little tight. Please, please, Dick, I need to sail back. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe after a, a little breaking in, they'll, they'll, they'll be all right. Well, you'll be sure to want to buy some of these shoe stretchers. Michael, I, I really... Please, please, Dick! Please! I need to sail back. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I love this man so much. He'll be, uh, he'll, he'll be with you in a minute. Thank you, George. You're very good in an emergency. I never built an eyeshadow rack before. <laughs> Did I ever tell you about the time old Blue yes. and I? Yes, George. Hi. 
Ready to gaze in wonder at the remnants of simpler times? Larry, it's, it's only been a week. The time capsule is supposed to be buried for a hundred years. We had to open it early. Daryl put in a library book. <laughs> Larry, isn't this silly? I mean, things can hardly change in a week. Sure they can. For starters, Michael isn't a TV producer anymore. And our friend, that nice Mr. X, is. In comparison, time has been much kinder to your lip print, Miss Stephanie. Raspberries in the snow. I can't believe I ever wore that shade. Maybe not in these modern times, but a more archaic Miss Stephanie did. And here we have some kind of primitive pounding device. Oh, boy! Must feel good to see old blue again, huh, George? Really, Dick, now that I have it back, it sounds kind of dumb to call a hammer old blue. Good. Ancient footwear. Evidently worn by some early and narrow-footed townsperson. Thank God. These new shoes, I was starting to walk like Jerry Lewis. And my scarf? <clears throat> Tomato sauce? Yes, ma'am. I'm afraid I packed it too close to Daryl's donation. A Domino's pizza. <laughs> Here, you keep it. In case you meet a nice girl or something. Uh-oh. It appears that someone has violated the sanctity of the time capsule for a quick snack. <laughs> well, Daryl, just for that, there'll be no going to the fluff and fold for those dryer rides. <laughs> What's wrong, Stephanie? Oh, I was just remembering the good old days when Michael had a job. I miss bragging about him. Oh. You know, he's still... still Michael, whether he's a producer or... Some, something lower. <laughs> Hello, Steph. Michael, why are you talking so plain? What's wrong? Well, I'm, uh, I'm a wee bit wary about telling you this, Steph. Oh, you can tell me anything. You know that. Now, whatever it is, can it really be that bad? I'm so lucky to have someone in my life so understanding. Get to the point. All right. <laughs> Tell her, Dick. Uh, uh, what? It was your idea. What was your idea? To t tell Stephanie that uh, Michael is, is working in a, in a shoe store. Michael! <laughs> <laughs> I guess this is goodbye, Steph. Goodbye, Michael! Wait! <laughs> wait, wait, wait a minute. This is crazy. <laughs> you, you can't break up with someone just because they're... They're working in a, a discount shoe store. Discount! <laughs> I, I, I thought of faking my own death, Muffer. <laughs> Dick put jerky ideas in my head about being proud of myself no matter what I do. He would say something like that. <laughs> well, Dick, if you're through slapping a condemned sign on my heart, I'll be going. I'll miss you, Michael. I'll miss you too, sir. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> That's it? I mean... You, you give up so easily? Oh, come on, Dick. I could never respect someone who dates a stock boy. <laughs> but, I mean, you've been going together for five years. You, you, you can't give up that easily. What difference does it make how long we've been linked? I'm a... a shoe man. <laughs> Wait, don't go. I think Dick finally said something that makes sense. Law of averages. <laughs> and it, it had something to do with us? Yes. Bear with me for a minute. Doesn't this all remind you of that sappy Christmas movie you like so much? Silent Night, Deadly Night? <laughs> no, that other one, where all those horrible things happen to that poor banker. It's a wonderful life. That's it. And no matter how bad it got, that brave and lovely woman stood right by his side. And in the end, all these people came over and gave them big piles of cash. <laughs> yeah, I love that ending. Stephanie, are you saying you'd be willing to consider being the brave and lovely cupcake by my side? 
I think I could play that. <laughs> you could be my Jimmy Stewart and I'll be your Michelle Pfeiffer. <laughs> Wasn't that Donna Reed? Not my version. <laughs> then we still have a chance? Lean on me, Michael. Somehow I'll find the strength to get us through these very troubled and hopefully temporary times. Jeepers, creepers, cuppers, it is a wonderful life. <laughs> What is it they say whenever two dumbbells ring, an angel gets his wings? Hi, this is George Jefferson. Wheezy, get ready, honey. Don't you wheezy, honey, me. We're coming up next on Nick at Night. <laughs>